Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to Montreal, also known as Circuit Joe Villeneuve. We are with the Porsche 911 GT3R and I'm just going to show you guys a lap real quick. And then we're going to take it corner by corner. Really struggled with this track, took me a while to figure things out. I'm going to talk about my difficulties in the track guide. If you enjoyed, leave a like and if you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel. Let's get on the track. Okay, so we're coming up to turn number one, looking for a breaking point. It's going to be on the right side here, this patch of grass. If I'm drafting, I would probably start breaking right around here. But if you're feeling brave like I was, start breaking right towards the end of it. Now, keep in mind that you're going to see me break very, very, very hard on this lap. This is uncharacteristic and not necessarily correct. Uh, this is how I managed to find pace, though. This is a very difficult track for me. I spent three days trying to do this track guide, and I, I'm still a little bit off. I'm, I still feel like I'm missing a little bit of pace. So take everything with a grain of salt. I think it was good enough, though, so you'll get some sort of indication on when the break, where the breaking points are and what the gears are. And I think overall it's a pretty good lap, but I could definitely this is not my this is not my best track at all. That's what I'm trying to say. So peaking very, very, very high, you can see up to 100%. Third gear, starting to turn in quite late. Second gear now, mounting this curb and already back on the power. And you'll notice I'm doing that a lot to maintain stability with the car so it won't get too upset. Putting the weight back on the rear, that's going to stabilize it nicely. The car won't bounce too much and will be nice and stable. I'm also getting a little bit of time, a little bit of speed here right before the next breaking point. You can see the variation in tarmac color. That's our breaking point for the next one. Downshifting into first gear, and I'm double apexing it, so I'm hugging the inside curb here, clipping it a little bit, letting the car wash out just a tiny bit, and going back to the inside again. Already back on the power quite aggressively. The car is very stable on the power of the Porsche, so you can really take advantage of that, even if the traction control kicks in a tiny bit, which it hasn't, but even if it does, not a big deal. Uh, all the way to the outside curb, and you're through. Now, uh, yeah, breaking point here, right bef right between the one and the two. So you have this shade. If you have this shade in the in the race, use it. But it's not necessarily uh, a good idea. You want to get used to not using any shadows. Uh, we're gonna break right past it. So I would say smack dab in the middle of the one and two signs, or the beginning of this blue sign on the right. Kind of harder to uh, take a look at it, but if you can manage to do that, that that's a better indication for you. Again, picking way too high, around 90%, downshifting all the way into second gear, trying to get a late-ish entry here, not to turn in too early, because if you do, you'll mount this curb too much, and if you do that, you'll get chucked out to the outside, lose a lot of speed, and get an off track here. Again, power on the curb stabilizes the car, and I'm just squeezing the throttle here. 
you'll see taking the car all the way to 100 percent and now i'm going to lift again and short shift into third third gear here is really going to help me stabilize the car dismounting the curb and not washing out too much to the outside because the porsche has a tendency to understeer on the power if you short shift there's a little bit less understeer so that's a good thing especially if you get so close to this wall you want to be as close to this wall as possible without touching it i think a zero x here can cancel your qualifying time here if you just clip it so keep that in mind now from this point on i'm aiming towards the curb on the inside here or the outside whatever you want to call it you got this little apex here and i'm aiming towards it putting my left wheel on it and this opens up this corner quite nicely you want to stay flat here don't be too shy to lift to like 80 percent for a millisecond here will save you a lot of tire if you're doing 40 minutes or three hours uh keep that in mind especially if you're drafting but the car is always going to have a tendency to wash out here you're going to track out to the middle and then you're going to have to break diagonally to the outside no real visual marker here so as soon as i can manage because you're you're pretty much always carrying the same amount of speed here so as soon as i can manage to track the car to the outside here i'm gonna start braking so right around here you can also take a look at this orange part of the barrier as we cross it the car is kind of par parallel to it i'm gonna start braking no real marker on the right i don't see anything really braking again very very hard 90 percent letting the car wash out to the outside just a little bit going over the white line downshifting into second gear and then a later downshift into first just now right here and that's gonna give me some late rotation which is exactly what you want here because with the fixed setup you cannot go over this uh, red stuff if you do uh, that's really gonna bounce the car and won't be able to put any power down on a very very important exit i'm trying to avoid it altogether i i, I know that with paid setups you can fully go over it but with the fixed setup you really have to be careful that may be the reason why I'm struggling to get good pace here this week. Or, you know, part of it. Trailer braking for a very long time. Clipping the inside curb. Sure. Just a little bit. And already back on the power. Squeezing it in first gear. And turning right into second. As I do. Again, we're going to lift. Manage some, to find some stability. To avoid a car washing out or snapping here. And then squeeze in second gear again you can see i'm going over the red and white curb here on the right it's gonna actually give you some rotation so if you're having understeer problems here that's gonna help you out a lot if you're having oversteer problems don't touch this stuff it's it will snap the car all the way to the outside you can short shift into third here i find if you if you're struggling with the rear end right towards the exit thing is you can clip this red and white curb but this red stuff is death as soon as you touch it you lose all grip you clip the wall or you spin to the right so you want to keep that in mind taking the car to the right here just to take a nice shorter route there's a couple of tenths uh, a couple of hundreds sorry in it for you now there's uh, this white line that's our breaking point so uh, as it breaks off and goes straight here likely before it is when we want to start breaking so right around here and we're going to try to be as wide as possible on entry. Put the left wheels on the white line here. Again, braking very, very high. Downshifting all the way into second. And you want to start to turn in quite early here. Because you want to find the magic spot. This is the magic spot. So if you go over this curb or around it, uh, this sausage, this white sausage curb, you're going to lose a lot of time. If you go all the way across it you're in danger of getting a three second penalty so this is really right on the edge and i'll show you that from the outside just in a second i'll go over the chicane first so i'm going all the way over it it's beneath the car and the car doesn't get upset i can already go back to the power and that's really beneficial <clears throat> excuse me second gear going flat out and as I turn to the left here, I'm going over this uh, curb. I'm mounting it. I'm not uh, get putting all the car across it because uh, there's grass here. So that's no bueno. I'm going to short shift into third. Right on the exit here. 
because the car is really bouncing a lot right now and i just want to stabilize it you can see i'm having the lift as well not a big deal you're still getting a pretty decent exit here if you take this line now let's look at it from the outside just for a little second chase 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 there it is you can see how much i'm using it so basically got my right wheels on the grass here but just a little bit any more than that less than an inch a centimeter to the right would be a three seconds time penalty so in a race it's it's a huge risk the reward is also very big though so trying to find a good line here can take will took me three days so you know it can take some time practice it because if you really want to be super competitive this is the way to go on this track going all the way over it you can see i'm just straight lining it and to avoid the instability short shift into third a little bit of a lift taking the car all the way to the outside really hugging the walls on this track it's what makes it fun but the chicanes are also what makes it very 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 frustrating so we'll keep that in mind practice it what i had to do some people love this track i'm okay with it i don't dislike it i i liked it more with f3 because there's only only so much curb you could use but with gt3s i'm just yeah i'm struggling i, I, I was really frustrated for a couple of days i thought about not doing the track guide altogether so we got this access route and right as uh it turns into grass again you want to start breaking this is a good breaking point right here i break later i break right around here and that's actually a pretty big difference in terms of uh speed you can gain some time by breaking a little extra late here but uh it's gonna boil up the tires like crazy you will lose your front left uh in no time if you do this like you will get way too much pressure in it way too much heat and tire wear will follow suit so uh, you want to keep that in mind. There's some time again if you break a little bit late, maybe if you're qualifying, but I would definitely break here in a race. Peaking high, 100%, downshifting as soon as I can into first gear. And you got this, uh, I noticed this part, this little line here, kind of goes uh, to the inside or just turns right, this little rubber. And I try to follow that on entry. It seems to be pretty good in terms of finding the rubber if you follow this part on entry uh, it will mean that you're not turning in too early you're not apexing too early and washing out on exit because you don't have any weight in the porsche so it's the moment you uh, don't have any weight in the front i mean so the moment you leave the trail break you let go of the trail break you just get complete understeer it just washes out uncontrollably here on exit cars are boiling hot but that even you know that exaggerates the, pr the problem even more you want to trail break for as long as possible before you go back to the power here you can see i'm, I'm kind of missing the in the inside curb here just a little bit to grab a late apex just so i can trail break for a little while longer i won't lose the speed you can see there's there's no gap between throttle and brake here so as soon as i let go of the trail break i'm already back on the power because if i'm trying to go neutral here for a little bit you'll just wash out as soon as you hit throttle you want to keep that weight on the front or else you're just going to understeer like crazy i would say what 90 percent 80 percent waiting on a little bit letting the car go all the way to the outside we get you see traction controls kicking in losing grip but it's fine and uh yeah from this point on everything's pretty obvious nothing to talk about really you want to take to the inside line here and let's find our breaking point for what i would call the death chicane wall of champions so three marker very safe breaking point don't use it unless you're willing to sacrifice some time here you really want to break later than that so you want to break slightly past it you can actually break later you can break here i braked earlier so i'm sort of between the ultra safe spot and you know a more dangerous spot which would be here so right around here slightly past the three again peaking super high all the way into second gear i'm now in third second now and the turn in initiates letting go of the brakes in you know all in one go almost into trail braking 
just a little bit almost no trail breaking so you can see i'm already back on the power at this point because if you go over these curves under breaking or neutral you're going nowhere you're going straight to the wall or you're spinning out or something so you really need to put the weight back on the rear going over and i'll show you the outside angle see how much i clipped 50 percent throttle keeps the car nice and stable you've got your whole right side of the car fully in the air right now let it land don't be too aggressive as it lands turn into the left Lifting just a little bit again, so you can see I return to around 80% throttle. Lifting just a little bit again. And going back to the power. So it's really vital that you try to do that. Let's see it in slow motion. I was touching the, the, the controllers too much. So again, almost no trail break. Going back to the power early. Then the car land. Lifting again. And accelerating as it lands. If you have a good line, if you don't have a good line, wait on it a little bit more. And yeah, that's uh, that also took me a while to figure out and uh, be brave enough to come in with the speed and start accelerating so early here because it's counterintuitive. You want to slow down because it's so damn bumpy, but you really have to accelerate through it or else you're, you're a losing a lot of time. A you're losing all your stability. You're spinning out. I spun out so many times landing from the first curb here. It's insane. Uh, yeah, so let's go to chase cam. See how much I clipped. This much is fine. A little bit more. Time penalty. A big one. All the way to the wall of champions. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty close. And that will give us, boys and girls... A 35 flat, a 135 flat. I hope you guys enjoyed this track guide. If you did, leave a like. And if you want to see more of this type of videos, then subscribe to the channel. I also do racing videos and live streams, mostly on Saturdays. And I'm going to be doing the six hours Nürburgring Nordschleife with a bunch of friends on Sunday. That's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.